Some things are supposed to be unforgettable, like how to ride a bike or how to manufacture the interstage material in W76 thermonuclear warheads. But of course, with enough time, you can forget anything. That's why I fell off my bike this morning, and also why the US National Nuclear Security Administration had to spend eight years and $92 million trying to reverse engineer a material called fog bank that they themselves had invented less than three decades prior. So what is fog bank, and how did it fall into and get yanked out of the national memory hole? The short answer is a series of nuclear oopsie doopsies. The long answer begins in 1975. Welcome to 1975. Ford is president, Jaws has everyone all freaked out about sharks, and Burger King just started selling the fish sandwich. Yum. Also, and this is a little more relevant, it's still the Cold War, and the United States is cooking up nukes, including the W76. And here, in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, at the Y-12 complex, in facility 9404-11, they made bank. Well, they made fog bank, a very important but very secret part of those payloads. How secret? Just ask their general manager. They finished the last of the W76s in 1989. Four years after that, the facility was slated for decommissioning, and everyone who knew how to make fog bank moved on with their lives. Some left the agency, some retired, but what absolutely none of them did was write down or teach anyone else how to make this stuff, meaning that by the year 2000, fog bank was the nuclear equivalent of your grandma's special brownie recipe that no one in the family can replicate. Though, for what it's worth, her secret was baking on the top rack of the oven for half the time and rotating the pan 180 degrees and moving it to the bottom rack for the rest. Hey, maybe that's how you make fog bank. Try it out and let me know. So it turns out that nukes, much like knowledge of how to make them, deteriorate over time. And in 2000, the NNSA created a plan to refurbish all those W76s they built in the 70s and 80s so they'd last until at least 2040. A perfect plan, except that it required more fog bank and, well, you know where this is going, nobody knew how to make it. Everyone who did had either died or just forgot, and there were barely any records to go on. And to understand how tough and how dangerous it was to remanufacture fog bank from scratch, we're going to take a quick detour into what fog bank is, probably. For all the secrecy around fog bank, there's a fair bit of consensus around what it most likely is and does. It's assumed to be an aerogel, which is an extremely light, yet extremely strong type of material nicknamed frozen smoke or San Francisco fog. There are a few reasons everyone suspects fog bank is an aerogel. It's a cool nickname for one, and for two, the fact that former NNSA director Tom Diagostino has mentioned that the compound acetonitrile, commonly used to produce aerogels, was part of the fog bank production process. As far as what it does, it's understood to be an interstage between the fission and fusion parts of the bomb. Because in simplest terms, a thermonuclear bomb works like this. There's a conventional bomb here that blows up, which puts enough pressure on this fission bomb to start splitting atoms, so that blows up and sends out a bunch of gamma and x-rays that bounce off these beryllium mirror casings, which heats up the interstage material, fog bank we're assuming, until it's 85 million degrees Celsius hotter than the literal center of the sun, which triggers the nuclear fusion reaction in this bomb down here, and now everyone's fusioning and fissioning back and forth like crazy until they just can't take it anymore. And then, to put it lightly, boom. Okay, fun detour. So, as you can imagine, remaking any part of this would not be super chill, and even though the NNSA invested $23 million in developing a workable fog bank alternative, nobody could definitively conclude through simulation that such a thing would work, and it's not like we're just going to do a bunch of nuclear testing for this new thing. So they really, really had to get fog bank, a material that probably needed to get as hot as the sun and took tons of dangerous, toxic, flammable chemicals to manufacture, right. Their first move was to reconstruct facility 9404-11 to a T, a project that faced tons of construction delays and issues with, no surprise, imperfect documentation of how that facility was built the first time. Then in 2007, they produced new fog bank, fog bank that had even lower impurity levels than the vintage stuff. And it still didn't work. So the NNSA upgraded the project to code blue status and threw 69 million more dollars at it. And the thing about just chucking loads of money at a seemingly unsolvable problem is, it worked. About a year later, in 2008, the NNSA recertified the production process for fog bank. As it happens, the issue with the flop fog bank from 07 was those lower impurity levels. By using a modern cleaning process in an early manufacturing stage, our dear scientists accidentally cleaned off a chemical that's part of a key reaction down the line that makes fog bank work. Yep, that's right. The US government spent $69 million to reach a conclusion that nearly every mid-tier pop song already had. Your imperfections are what make you beautiful, and never change for anyone. So they amended the new manufacturing process to add that chemical impurity back in down the line, and a short 10 full years later, they delivered the last of the refurbished W76s. Yay? 
The new process is illustrated in this very helpful and not at all vague diagram from Los Alamos National Laboratory, which I pray isn't the only written record of how we're doing this. But maybe it is. If I've learned anything today, it's that you can't trust the people building weapons that one day will blow us all to smithereens to be just a little bit detail-oriented. But please, if any of those people are watching, learn from your mistakes, write stuff down. I do not want my government to waste 92 mil of potential train money on this mess ever again. But you know what's worse than wasting money on dumb, tedious pursuits? Wasting time on dumb, tedious pursuits. And yet, that's exactly what a lot of people end up doing with most or all of their career. Everyone assumes that there's some trade-off between having a meaningful career and one that actually pays the bills, but our sponsor, 80,000 Hours, is on a mission to prove that false. They're an independent nonprofit that puts tons of their own 80,000 hours into conducting research and developing resources to help you plan a fulfilling, impactful career for free. Yeah, actually free. Because they know how difficult, not to mention stressful, it can be to find work that suits you, pays the bills, and makes the world a better place. That's why they developed all these resources, like their podcasts, guides, and job boards, to help you find your path. And did I mention it's totally free? You can actually get expert-level career advice for zero dollars. So if you're ready to start planning your most meaningful career, or you're just curious about your options, head over to 80,000hours.org slash half as interesting right now.